and welcome back to the excitement that is me growing stuff in pots. Hoorah! Where do we even start with this one? We've had a few disasters. Obviously our tomatoes are getting bigger by the week. Look, we've actually got tomatoes. I need to move them out of the sun because they're getting fried in the sun. I know, water them at night, 35 degree day, they get fried. All the ones I've got in the semi-shade are okay. There is Benji. I also think, oh, look at that. It is getting ridiculous. All these things are eating my plants. He's gone now. Oh, I think this is natural for the potatoes to go mingy like this. These are apparently some sort of potato bug. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but the worst thing that's happened, oh, and check out these. How cool are the pawpaws now? They have got massive, ah, oh, look at that. We had minge, well, mites. Apparently there was mites on some of my plants. There is a leaf. That is mite damage. I did spray them with a household remedy. Kind of worked, kind of got impatient and Apparently taking the leaves off them also works. So we have no leaves on a few of our plants. We have still sprayed them. Mites. Oh, this is the excitement. So those two chili plants were the ones sitting there. There's only one or two other ones infected. You can actually see it on their leaves. Oh, well, you can't see the mites. You can see the damage of the mites. Mites. I think apart from mites, and I keep saying mites. Uh, yellow zucchini also was attacked by mites. I had no idea it was mites. I've only ever seen spider mites before, not all these other weird types of mites, but I spread apparently. So <laughs> we'll see how much carnage there is in the next few weeks. Such a pain, but it is what it is. I don't think it's gonna completely kill the plants. See I'm spraying them with soapy, watery stuff with stuff in it and oil but we'll see apparently if you spray them with oil and keep them in the sun that will kill them so don't do that if you're following along <laughs> but our new plants tomatoes also do not like full sun so i've been moving the tomatoes new plants new plant alert there they all are let me wash the mites off my hands first so I'm not gonna to touch any of these plants because I don't want to contaminate them with my filthy mite hands. But we have planted all our chili plants. These are all the different types of chilies I got the other week from Mel. There is a whole lot of herbs and stuff there. We're also not gonna to touch those, but everything's sort of been potted up. I've got them undercover because we don't trust the 35 degree days we've been having. <laughs> there are more on the ground. Why have I got so many plants? Oh, just to attract all these bugs, I guess. <laughs> I did get a few more tomato. No, they're not tomato plants. What are they? They're strawberry plants and they are going well. I'm guessing there's multiple bugs that eat strawberries. We'll find out, won't we? Yes, we will. Uh, I did get a couple of awesome watermelons. Check out the spots on the leaves. A few people have said, oh no, they shouldn't have spots, but they are, I keep calling them stars and stripes watermelons. They are not. They are speckly watermelons called moon and stars. Apparently they have speckles on the watermelon, speckles on the leaves. I did get two of those the other week. They lasted three days in the sun because don't put plants in the sun that have not really been in the sun. <laughs> I should know that. I know that a lot more now. So these guys are safe under here until they get a little bit bigger and we'll slowly, slowly get them into the sun or semi-sun. I do actually like watermelons. Well, kind of, <laughs> but I eat strawberries. So I got more strawberries because our original strawberry plant is going well. The pawpaws over there are going good. I didn't say well, did I? It's because they're not really going well. A lot of them lost their leaves. They haven't got their leaves back. It has only been about a week or two. I know it takes probably a bit longer than that. They're going 
okay. <laughs> uh, what else? That, which is the rhubarb. The rhubarb does not like the heat. Thought it would be okay. It's not. Yeah, so RIP little buddy. It's holding on. And looking at it now, it looks like it might have mites as well. Yay! <laughs> We're going well. So I am trying the home remedy of oil. What is it? Oil, water. God, that crow's noisy wherever it is. Shh. Probably can't hear the crow, but I can hear the crow. Yeah, I'm trying the home remedy of water, oil, and dishwashing liquid, I believe. And that's supposed to suffocate the little mites. So we'll see how that goes. The pumpkins. Look at the pumpkin now. Did have a few mingy leaves. Again, this is not mites. This is mildew because of the humidity here. I'm kind of ignoring it. I did spray some of them with water and milk and apparently that helps. There are so many little lady beetle bug things that are spreading the mildew because apparently they're eating the aphidy things. Yeah, I don't know. We're just ignoring that. We don't really like pumpkins anyway, so it's not a huge loss if something happens to the pumpkin plant. <laughs> but saying that, there are little pumpkins. Look, tiny pumpkin. There it is. These are the Jack B. Little pumpkins, which means that they're little. What do you do with them? I have no idea. Probably biff them at cars. Oh, more tomatoes. That's exciting. The horseradish. Something has happened to the horseradish. Look. Now, this is different again. It seems to be affecting the original leaf, so it might just be... Bird, stop! Wow. Look at them. Bugger off. Bugger off. So loud. So yes, I think this might be the original leaves dying off. I'm not entirely sure. If you know what this disease is, comment down below. <laughs> but that is my horseradish. It's huge now. In the rubbish bin that's under there somewhere. The luffer, which is like a weird giant bean thing. Apparently the seeds were six or seven years old, Maddie said. Yeah. These three kind of suck at life. I thought we'll plant them when they get a little bit bigger. They didn't get bigger. Oh, I will show you these two though. Wow. This one keeps growing crazy. So that one is the same age, growing a lot better than the others. And I had them in the same place. I just moved this one the other week and it's just taken off. So probably should move the other one, shouldn't I? That's the second best one. So I think that's its little runners there. So the other two, not too sure. Maybe I'll put a little trellisy thing there and fit them there. The other pumpkin. Oh, the minge on this little boy. <sighs> I know, the original leaves did not cope. Humidity kind of screwed them a little bit, but the new runner is going well past the ponies. I need to probably move that down here. I think I'll just train that to go back down here over Mr. Chernobyl. That will be fine. These tomatoes are going well here in the shade. These are going super well. They're like four foot high now. So I think this is the ideal area for tomatoes. They get late afternoon sun, sort of shaded by the fruit trees, which is a good, good thing. And the fruit trees have fruit. They've had fruit technically since I got them, but the fruit is not dropping off and the fruit is getting fruitier. <laughs> we had a lot of rain and apparently rain is better for them than all sorts of other water because it apparently sucks nitrogen from the sky and that helps everything grow. That is bizarre. Why can't we just put nitrogen in our water? Well, technically we could, but that's weird that it sucks nitrogen from the sky. I did not know that. Thank you very much for Amy for Googling and telling me that. <sighs> the psychedelic corner is going okay. That is such a cool plant. Mudwort, mugwort. <sighs> My, what are they? That is 
And my ice cream bean, I had to look at the tag to remember. Doesn't seem to have any minge. That ice cream bean does seem to have a little bit of minge. Why is everything getting minge? Apparently, Maddie said, everything's getting minge because everything is too close together. So I need more airflow, less minge areas for little bugs to go, ha ha, we're gonna destroy your plants, which they seem to be doing. So I'm not entirely sure if that yellow zucchini is gonna survive or not. It's fighting. I keep cutting the dodgy leaves off, but if I cut all the leaves off, there's not gonna be any plant left. So we'll see how we go with that. Up here, now the eggplants sort of slowly stopped eggplanting. Oh, there are so many bugs everywhere. I think that is a lady beetle larvae. Apparently they eat the minge on the leaves that are eating the plant. I don't know. We're ignoring it. The pinot, that's why it looked mingy. It had mites as well. So we've sprayed the crap out of that. Hopefully that will be okay. <laughs> basil keeps on basiling. I don't think much kills basil. It's got weird seeds now. Are they basil seeds? Well, you would expect them to be, seeing it's a basil and it has seeds. <laughs> Peppers have sort of slowed down in peppering, I believe. We have our grapes. Hmm. This one is the last one I got, and it's sort of considering growing. It is. Oh, this one's just started holding on overnight. Oh, you special lady. Look at it. What's that one? That one is uh, Red Globe. You are. They're great with names, aren't they? A red globe grape. Hopefully it will take off soon. This one, which is my first grape, which is only like about a week or two before I got the other ones. Oh, a black muskrat. Muskrat? It's muscat. <laughs> muskrat. Yes, this one tastes like a wet black rat. Mmm, that sounds delicious in a bottle, doesn't it? It's holding on. Look at his little hand. So I think last week it was only up to there. So it has grown that much in a week. What's that you say? I'm gonna run out of room? Nah, they just go that way. They'll be fine. Apparently you trim them if you're that way inclined. We're kind of not, probably should. This one, I don't know, is that a disease? It probably is a disease, isn't it? Also comment down below if you think that's a disease with the edging or it's a lack of something. That is a seedless grape. Maybe seedless grapes just suck a little bit. I don't know. This one seems okay. And that is a white muscat. See, I didn't call it a muskrat. So those are the grapes. The trees are going super well there. So I do need to move all of this stuff still and redo it. I do want to get rid of the lawn and put something down, maybe weed mat and gravel or bark or something, and generally have it not looking like a complete nightmare jungle mess. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see whether or not that happens in the next few weeks, won't we? But that is sort of where we are. I have not done my shade thing up here, obviously. That's why there's no shade thing up there. It's not even summer yet. And when summer hits, it's gonna be a little bit too hot. So I'm suspecting things will start frying. So I will need to sort that out pretty quick. Over here in the tree section, haven't killed anything. So this is good. <laughs> oh, in these pots, finally they have started popping up. They are potatoes. Oh, that, which I had no idea what on earth it was, it is one chili plant, and that was from a random decomposing chili found in the fridge with like 50, 60 seeds. We got one. I did plant a few more random chilies than there, so we'll see if we get 10,000 chili plants or not, and then panic about that in the next week or two. Yeah, I don't know if it's too late to grow potatoes because this one popped up and probably got sunburnt. This one seems okay. We'll figure that one out. Yeah, that was those. I think that one's not going to come through. 
those two. I don't know. We'll just ignore it and hope for the best. My rainbow tomato experiment. Ah. Oh. Let's look at the rainbow tomato, shall we? Let's look at that now. So this is what has happened in the last, I think, three weeks or so. So I started taking a video every day of the tomatoes. And we tried two different soils. Yeah, and a rainbow gravel because people were telling me that tomatoes will grow in anything. Cool. Well, they're going to grow in rainbow tomato gravel, aren't they? Will that produce rainbow tomatoes? I'm not entirely sure. We'll find out. Have we found out? No, we haven't found out yet. But we will find out soon. <laughs> Look how fast they're growing. So I always thought the middle one was doing better than the other two. But they've sort of caught up at the end. The only problem with the rainbow gravel one is if I don't water it, they just completely welt because there's nothing except rainbow gravel in there. But now, all the roots have come out the bottom. Yeah, so I don't really know what I'm doing with those now. I think I need to put a little trellis -y thing around them to stop them from flopping over. Yeah, how weird is that? It's growing in just normal rainbow gravel. I haven't been fertilizing them, but I have been using water out of the pond behind them, which is like green with high phosphates and nitrites, which is just a lot of leaf litter and crap in there. So that is their main fertilizer natural filthy green water hmm but they went well that was that ah, if you want to see something sad here is the yellow zucchini from the start all the way to it magically looking like it's got dodgy leaves i'm not entirely sure then i realize oh it's probably mites until it looks like it does now, which is super, super sad. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this video, click the thumbs up. I'll make some more videos about this nightmare, which is hours of fun. <laughs> so it's sort of a disaster, but not really. I think like five or ten plants out of a billion plants is good odds. We will see you in the next video. Enjoy.